I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, I'm going to show you how you to put the black box sticks overlay on your FPV video. You know the little thing down at the bottom of the screen that shows you what the sticks are doing? I'm going to show you how to do that. Stay tuned. There's nothing more inspiring than watching a great FPV video, but it often leaves me and probably you wondering, how did he freaking do that? Uh, and there's no better way to answer that question than by watching what the pilot is doing on his sticks. Now, many pilots make a stick cam by putting a GoPro on their chest and putting it down at the transmitter, and that's okay, but it's not always easy to see what they're doing that doesn't always line up right. What I like to do is record with Black Box, because you know me, Mr. Black Box, uh, and then from black box, you can generate a stick overlay that you can put on top of the video using your favorite video editing software. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do in this video. If you've been a subscriber to my channel long enough, you know I've already got a video showing you how to do the black box sticks overlay. But that video is actually no longer valid since Betaflight 3.1. Betaflight 3.1 changed the format of the log files that black box outputs. So it's no longer compatible with the command line utilities that I used to create the sticks overlay. So I'm gonna show you the new updated version of how to do that for Betaflight 3.1. And for those of you who've never seen the old video, it'll be the first time you've learned how to do it. The first thing you need to do in order to get this black box sticks overlay working is get black box working. And in order to tell you how to do that, I'm gonna refer you to my black box 101 playlist. Uh, even if you're not super interested in black box log analysis, the very first video in that playlist goes through the steps necessary to get black box working and to get a black box log file off of your copy and onto your computer. So if you're not sure how to do that, go ahead and watch that video first and then come back here and I'll show you what to do after you get the log file off the computer. You're gonna open the log file that goes with the flight that you wanna do the stick overlay for. And then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna turn off all of the graphs. You don't want those graph lines going on top of the sticks when you export the stick overlay. You just want the sticks all by themselves, no graphs. Next, you're gonna go into view, preferences, and I like to turn on the stick trails that makes the sticks have a little trails after them, let people see what they're doing. You can also choose mode one or mode two or three and four if you're a weirdo. Then you're gonna click export video and choose the parameters for your video and hit begin export, which will output a .webm file. I didn't do this just there, but I like to rename the file to have the same name as the log file that I'm exporting. This takes for freaking ever. You can see it's gonna take like 30 minutes to export a single flight, which is, I don't know, two, two minutes, 22 seconds. Uh, and this is one way that the new Betaflight 3.1 changes have really made things worse. Uh, before Betaflight 3.1, you could use these command line utilities to export these. And they took a while, but they didn't take this long. But the other thing was that you could run multiple instances of them. So if you had 10 files to make, you could just get all 10 of them going at the same time and leave your computer chugging, come back an hour later and they'd all be done. In this case, you can only, I think, run the, you can only run one instance of the Chrome app. So you can't, you have to, it takes forever to output these and it's a real shame. And I really, really hope the devs take this into account and at least give us a way to do batch exports of log files so I could queue a bunch of them up and have them export overnight. But for now, this is the way you gotta do it. It really sucks. After your export's done, you'll have a .webm file with the export of the stick overlay and that's a video file. But here's the next problem. Premiere can't import that natively. Uh, you, there's, I think there's a plugin that lets it import WebM files, but I don't have it. So you can see here, if I go to that directory and look, I don't see any of the WebM files. If I search .webm, they're not there. So the next thing you're gonna need to do, or at least that I do, is I use WinFF to convert them to MP4. Uh, WinFF is a fantastic program for converting video to different formats. Uh, and in this case, it'll take the .webm file and I can just do all of them here. So you can see I'm gonna do a batch. I'm gonna to export to the same folder. That's that checkbox use source folder to export. And I'm gonna choose MPEG4 720p to export them. You can export 720p, you can export 1080p. It doesn't really matter. There's plenty of resolution for the sticks uh, either, either way, but uh, 720p makes it a little smaller and it goes a little faster. Now in Premiere, I'm gonna to go to the media browser and I'm gonna find the GoPro file that I'm looking for. Uh, that's the GoPro file for the FPV flight I want to import. And I'm going to drag that to a blank timeline so it'll create a new sequence for that file. 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the point where I first turned the motors on, and that's easy to do by looking at the audio waveform. That's basically where the log is going to start. And then I'm going to go find the MP4 file that goes with that log, and I'm going to put it on top of that. Now you can see it's, it's imported right there. I'm going to right-click and choose Scale to Frame Size to make it full frame, and now it's taking over the whole frame. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use Color Key to key out the black background. And if I go to Effect Controls, here's how I do that. I'm going to set the key color as black, and then I'm going to adjust the color tolerance until the background completely goes away. And I'm going to zoom in here, and I'm going to check the edges in order to clean up the edges just a bit. You see how there's this black around the edges? Here I'm adjusting color tolerance, and I'm finding the highest color tolerance that gives me a clean edge without getting rid of the actual stick overlay. So I'm just going to find the sweet spot for color tolerance. I can adjust edge trim and edge feather to get that looking nice. So edge trim, yeah, just I'm just going to tweak these until I get it looking roughly nice. So that's edge feather. Adding a little bit of negative edge trim will cause the black sort of halo around the edges. And this actually makes it easier to read the numbers, I think. So that's actually something I like to do on purpose. If I were trying to do real, like, professional color keying, I probably wouldn't like to do that. But I think this is really good for the stick overlays. So I'm going to turn on the safe margins, which is what I just did there, and I'm gonna, that's going to give me a marker for the center of the frame. And then in the effect controls, I'm going to drag the position over and down to center the sticks where I want them on screen. And I'm also going to choose the crop effect and put the crop effect on the stick overlay video. And I'm going to crop it so that nothing else, like the, the, the lines that go across it when you arm or disarm, so that nothing else becomes visible. I'm just going to make sure the whole frame is cropped out except for the stick overlay. So I'm going to drag the sliders until see, I see it disappear. And then I'm going to drag it back until just the edge of the stick overlay is in frame. Drag it down until I see the top start to disappear, then back it off. Yeah, you see I'm cropping out down at the lower right. I'm cropping out those numbers. I just don't want any garbage in the screen other than the stick overlay. Okay, great. Cropping, done. And then again, using position, I'm going to put it where I want it on screen. You see I've got it centered on that little marker from the safe margins. Bam, now it's centered, now it's where I want it. Now what I can do is I can right-click, select all, and I can save that as a preset so that I can apply this very quickly and easily to future stick overlays. All the stuff, the keying, the position, you do this work once, and then you just apply that preset in the future. It's very easy to do. Finally, what I need to do is I need to line it up with the start of the, uh, of the motion. Um, and I'm just going to watch the sticks as the pilot takes off, listen to the motors, and just see if I've got it synced up. Well, there you go. Now you know how to do a black box sticks overlay video. And if you feel like going to all that hassle, uh, I know that many, many people will appreciate it. Don't uh, underestimate how many people out there who are just getting into the hobby and learning how to fly could really benefit from seeing what more experienced pilots do with their sticks. Even stuff that you and I maybe take for granted is like, of course, that's how you do a split S or whatever. But people just don't know. And being able to see what you're doing is really valuable. Frankly, I wish that more pro pilots were, were eager to post this kind of video. There's some pilots out there who I watch what they do, and I'm like, how the, what are you doing to make that happen to your quad? I can't figure it out. And so, uh, yeah, if you feel like doing this, hopefully this will be the impetus you need to start posting uh, more stick overlay videos. Thanks for watching. Hope it was educational. And as always, happy flying.